Hey guys, welcome back to What the Fat. I uh, have the amazing Dr. Jacob Wilson back on today. Yesterday, uh, you guys got to hear a little bit of his story. I think there's a lot more to share. And like we said, one day we'll write a book all about it. Um, but today, you know, we usually talk about keto specific stuff, but I want to talk about something that's probably one of the most controversial topics. There's people that adamantly do not think there is. There's people who adamantly think there is. And that is, is there a metabolic advantage to a ketogenic diet? So Doc, can you do us a favor and at least first kind of like explain a little bit for people that might not have any idea what metabolic advantage is or what that e what that term even means? What what would even coin or, or what would it mean to have a metabolic advantage? Well, it depends on really what you're looking at. But in this case, what we're talking about is, is body composition. Um, the metabolic advantage simply means that if you do calorie for calorie, that ketogenic dieting will result in greater fat loss. Oh boy. Calories. <laughs> oh boy. Open it up a whole nother can of yeah. worms. All right. So it's essentially saying that there's an advantage over just caloric restriction by itself. Um, although there, we can get into it, but I think the fact that ketogenic dieting causes you to lower calories more anyway is still a metabolic advantage. But, um, but the point is, if you control for calories, would keto win? Mm, yeah, okay, okay. So Very controversial topic. Here we go. Yeah. Guys, buckle up. Uh, yeah. So, so this, is, this is a controversial topic. So let's talk about this. Are there any studies out there that, that you're aware of where calorie, you control for calories? And I think a lot of it too, and let's, we, can, we can kind of segment into this, but even control <clears throat> for just calories. Let's start there first. Just calories – do you see a benefit to keto? Uh, yes, there's definitely said that there you control for just calories that you do see a benefit to keto. I don't think even the most staunch person would argue that. There's definitely studies you can point out that show that. Whether you're on the fence of metabolic advantage or not, we do see those studies. And so the next thing, as I agree, I agree, I think we see it across the board. The next question they have is, well, yeah, of course, but those individuals are eating more protein. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the biggest contentions is like, oh, yeah, ketogenic diet is better, even though the calories are the same, but one has more protein than the other. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the study um, about Paoli with the gymnasts, like mm -hmm. they saw a greater advantage but the protein was higher in the gymnasts who were eating a quote unquote ketogenic diet versus the ones that weren't eating, eating a ketogenic diet. Yeah. Do you think it's just the protein or are there studies that have shown when protein's equated? Well, one, let me say, I don't think it's just the protein. Okay. Um, but going to that protein point, we do know protein's thermically active, meaning it helps you raise metabolism, right. helps you hold on to muscle, maintain an elevated metabolism. We do know protein's beneficial. One thing I'll say is this. We like myself. A lot of the research I've come is from uh, bodybuilding, building muscle, optimizing physique. Bodybuilders will write down their meals. They will meal prep for the week. The majority of people, ninety nine point nine percent of the population, are going to sit there Sunday night and meal prep and have a you know dozens of Tupperware set out Monday through through Saturday, right. and then meal prep again Sunday. That's not going to happen. So when you give general recommendations for a ketogenic diet or a low fat diet. The fact that a ketogenic diet naturally places someone to a more optimal macro, macronutrient ratio, be it higher protein or other variables, to me is a winner already, right? Because the majority of people aren't going to sit there and weigh out their protein. They're not going to count, oh, I wonder if I got 150 grams of protein. It's not going to happen. They're going to go, oh, I'm going to lower my carbs. I'm going to select out higher fat foods. I'm going to select out healthy proteins. And by nature, their protein is going to be higher. That's already a point in the ketogenic ball um, court. That, that's the main thing to, to, to talk about. Sure. Now, just the fact that I think, yes, keto wins on that, but let's just say that you were to control for protein, which I don't think is realistic because you need studies need to control for reality. That's what I always say. Mm, like studies point. need to control for reality because a clean, sterile environment is not reality. Okay, so in the real world, you're going to select at a higher protein for keto. But let's say that we do control for protein. There are a number of studies that have shown a metabolic advantage. Great study, classic study by Young. They took individuals and they essentially um, had them, they fed them their meals. They controlled for calories, they controlled for protein. The only thing they varied was fats and carbs. One group had 100 grams of carbs, which everyone would consider, most people would consider low carb. One group had 60 grams of carbs. 
One group had 30 grams of carbs. So 100 grams of carbs, 60, 30. Everyone was low carb. The group that was the 30 gram group had the highest level of ketosis. Then second was the 60 gram, then third was 100 gram. In that order was the amount of fat that was lost. In other words, even though you controlled for protein, even though you controlled for calories, the group that was the lowest amount of carbs and the highest ketosis demonstrated the highest amount of fat loss. Moreover, they demonstrated the highest maintenance of muscle mass, whereas the group that had the higher carb lost the most muscle. So what this is demonstrating is that the first possible metabolic advantage to ketogenic diet is elevated ketones likely spare muscle tissue. And muscle tissue is the biggest thing to guard against when you're dieting because it's important for metabolism. Yeah, and you just touched on a lot of gems and a lot of important pieces. But going back to the protein thing, like even talking about that and talking about the muscle component of things, you have things like sarcopenia. Like a lot of times people get confused and they hear muscle, especially people that are like listening and they're like, you know, I'm not trying to get big and bulky. It's like, that's okay. Trust me. Like I've been trying to do that for years and I still haven't gotten there. <laughs> but people are just like preserving that muscle tissue is hard within itself. And I think a lot of people are under eating protein, uh, especially people who are on like a ketogenic diet tend to, especially if they're like fasting for a mm -hmm. long period of time. But like you mentioned, compared to like a standard American diet, eating keto, like ketogenic foods, so to speak, automatically place you at a, an, at a point where you're likely eating higher amounts of protein than you would at the same calorie load with a standard American diet. Is that what you're, is that what you're That's saying? That's 100% correct. And the interesting thing is that if you look at sarcopenia, one of the things that causes sarcopenia is that our taste preferences for protein lower, especially on a low-fat diet, across age span. Right. So if keto naturally makes you eat more protein, as you age, that's a beneficial thing, besides the longevity effects that you get out of it and the muscle sparing effects you give it, and the fact that as you age, you become less insulin sensitive. So you touched on the study from Young, which is a classic study. It was done in the 70s. Yeah. I, I still am boggled that people overlook this study and claim that, oh, if you match for calories, everything's going to be the same. Yep. It's not the case. So even when you don't, right, you see that. Since then, uh, we could talk a little bit about like even Rachel Gregory's study, mm -hmm. where she did it in CrossFit athletes. Our study, like multiple studies now have, have eaten, uh, have seen studies that have no differences in calories, no differences in protein, and seen different results. Do you want to touch on those for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so we, like, well, we did a study. The thing about our studies is that we were so hardcore. We're so hardcore in our studies. We controlled for diet. We measured blood ketone levels. In this case, we took well-trained individuals, bodybuilders, guys who could lift a lot of weight, squat a lot of weight, and they were beasts. We put one group on a ketogenic diet, one group on a carb diet. We had them work with a dietitian. We measured everything throughout the whole study, controls for protein intake. And we found that the ketogenic group lost more body fat than the low fat group. And that's really, really important. And a lot of people came out and like attacked and said, that's not possible. But, it, but it's exactly what we found. But the cool thing about it is we're not the only people who found this. Not only did Young find that, not only did we find it, but Rachel Gregory actually did a study in CrossFit athletes where there are no differences in protein intake, and the CrossFit athletes on the ketogenic diet lost more body fat, even when controlling for... for so we see that non-athletic conditions, we see bodybuilding conditions, we see more strength, endurance, explosive CrossFit conditions. Across the board, we're actually seeing this impact. Um, and also, we have also done it in animal studies. We did a study with Dr. Mike Roberts where we had individuals and we had a Western diet, which is basically like the um, McDonald's type diet. We had a low-fat healthy diet and we had a ketogenic diet. The low-fat diet ate less calories than the ketogenic diet because we let them eat what they want. Total protein intake was the same and the ketogenic diet lost more fat than the actual, than, than the other groups. So I think again, overall, whether it's humans, animals, where it's exercising head with heavy weights, whether it's strength endurance, whether it's normal people, there's enough studies showing this now. One of the things that comes across all the time is people talk about like meta-analyses, right? And the problem with meta-analyses is that garbage in equals garbage out, right? So that's why it's important to take oftentimes single trials 
and analyze those trials, especially when they're controlling for all the variables. Right, and that's a really good point. You talk, like a lot of times people look at meta-analysis and they say, oh, that's the, that's the top of the pyramid, that's the greatest of all. But in actuality, like you said, they're so convoluted because like you, garbage in, garbage out, it'll wash out any effects. Yeah. So you need to look at every single study in detail and, and decipher that. And that's difficult for most people to do. That's why I love what you do and over at the Muscle PhD and like that's what we're trying to do at, at Aspi. And even on ketogenic.com is like take apart some of these studies and like spit it out and regurgitate it to people so that way it's understandable, but you're doing it on a study by study basis and then helping make conclusions from there. I think that's exactly. that's important. One of the things going back to the study that we did and that Rachel did, I think another important piece is that both groups maintain their performance. Yeah. Right. I think a lot of times people go, Oh, okay, cool. That's cool. You lost body fat, like on that, on that ketogenic diet thing. But my performance is what I'm concerned about. Both groups maintain their performance. They both gained to the same extent as individuals who were having carbohydrates. So it wasn't better, but it certainly wasn't worse. And they were able to gain in performance just as much. Well, the funny thing is that it's the opposite of what you and I predicted. Yeah. What we did this study six years ago. Yeah. We predicted that basically, I thought I actually thought the ketogenic diet group might lose more body fat, but I predicted they wouldn't perform as well and they couldn't gain as much muscle. We both, this was our hypothesis, and we were wrong. It turned out that not only did they lose more body fat, but they were able to gain the same amount of muscle and the same amount of strength. And of course, we've even looked at the at the muscle level and seen they've been able to stimulate as much protein synthesis. So this to us is very exciting. Now, what do you think, what are some ideas that you have behind what might explain some of that? Like we, we've seen some, we actually have some data. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Well, number one, I think like you pointed out is the fact that ketones themselves may be anabolic. And anabolic processes may elevate metabolism. So for example, if, if I raise protein synthesis, my brother, um, Dr. Gables, and actually looked directly at this, if you stimulate protein synthesis, it's an energetically demanding process. And it's almost like uh, exercise mimetic is what we say. It's like if you can trigger protein synthesis, you mimic to a light extent exercise. So I think one, that might stimulate an increase in caloric expenditure. But I think two, that you're able to sustain muscle mass and that helps elevate, keep metabolism stoked. On top of that, you and I have found that ketogenic dieting increases what we call as brown adipose tissue. Mm. A topic you're super interested in, you've done a lot of research in, but brown adipose tissue is very thermically active. Um, basically, it's, a, it's an inefficient tissue that's packed with mitochondria. That's why it's brown, which mitochondria is our fat-burning furnace. And it basically, in response to things like cold, it elevates our metabolis metabolism and increases energy production by a heat, which we can't use and stores energy. It's heat, but we can't store it. We can't use it. So brown fat is the type of fat that we actually want yes. compared to white adipose tissue. That's exactly right. right. It's exactly right. And ketogenic dieting in our research and multiple other studies increases brown fat. Right. And I think one of the biggest aspects, and you touched on this a little bit, even if you want to argue the calories match for calories, you just pointed out several different studies that have shown the benefits even when calories are matched protein match even if you still want to have an argument that oh those are like whatever you want to have against that 99 percent of the, like there there are mechanisms by which when you're in a state of ketosis you're seeing people eat a lower amount of food mm -hmm. so people that's why people when you're when you're on a ketogenic diet people talk about intermittent fasting and there's a ton of benefits to that but even the calorie consumption itself is lower in most people who are on a ketogenic diet, and we're seeing that over and over again, that's been shown in multiple studies. So that alone is one of the other metabolic advantages to being in a state of ketosis, would you say? I think that's absolutely correct. It's like, again, the bottom line is that people aren't robotic bodybuilders. It's just not the way it is. And even bodybuilders, I don't care how tough they are, they rebound and get fat after contests. Why is that the case? Because number one, they're forcing themselves, they're miserable while they're dieting, so they have the will to keep their calories low by forcing them. Ketogenic diet allows you to do it in a more effortless fashion, okay, as opposed to forcing yourself. But even if we said calories were the same and someone forced themselves to lower their calories versus ketogenic diet, we were naturally lowering them and they got to the same point, studies show at the end of that dieting period, 
people who are on the low fat diet have hormones like ghrelin that are elevated mm -hmm. for even a year down the line that are still making you hungry. The ketogenic group is still maintained. Like in other words, they have normal levels of ghrelin even after dieting or hunger hormones and a year later the same. So the ability to rebound and mm -hmm. bounce back after that low fat diet is so much higher as, as far as the probability of regaining weight. Brilliant point. And I think a lot of times people that argue this uh, often forget about the psychological component of life, right? Like you said, there are, there are facts and it's physiological as well. There's legitimate hunger hormones that are at play, but like that triggers someone to want to read, to want to eat more. And then they end up rebounding. Right. And I think those are important pieces that oftentimes people forget is there are hunger hormones, there are satiety signals that are going on in your brain all the time and how those are intertwined and how those are played out when you're in a state of ketosis versus if you're eating a low fat, high carbohydrate diet drastically affect the amount of food and the amount of food that you're consuming. Exactly right. So I think that's a, that's a brilliant idea. And I think, I think a lot of people that'll clear up a lot of confusion for a lot of people on like, is there a metabolic advantage to being in a state of ketosis? And I think so many people get frustrated on both ends, right? People who are keto argue with people on, uh, that are eating a high amount of carbs all the time on this, this point. But I think we just provided a ton of evidence and grounds to say that there legitimately is a metabolic advantage even when calories and protein are matched. And I think that's one of the biggest things that people can take away from today is that even when calories and protein are matched, there are studies showing that there are greater results on a ketogenic diet. It's fire, brother. So, all right, guys, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I know that was a lot to take in. I know you guys are going to digest that concept of a metabolic advantage and, and help spread that. I think that's one of the most important pieces is get that information out there. And there are studies supporting it. And I think that's one of the most important thing. So appreciate you guys tuning in today. Make sure you go to uh, iTunes. Make sure you check this, this out on YouTube. Review, subscribe, check everything out. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Tomorrow, you know, like we like to have like a little fun on Fridays. Tomorrow we'll be talking a little bit about business. So for some of you who want to know a little bit of insight of like how we made the transition into running ASPE and some of the challenges, trials and tribulations we face running a business, you'll hear from the CEO of ASPI. So appreciate you guys tuning in and we'll talk to you later.